And we're live. Hello, Mad PD. Hello. I am here with lots of friends. Thank you, friends, for joining. We're all going to introduce ourselves in a minute. But my name is uh, my Jen. I'm Jen Giffen. I am at Virtual GIF on Twitter. So a lot of people, when they see me, they just say that Virtual GIF. They don't actually, I think, know my name, which is fine. Um, I am coming to you from Richmond Hill, Ontario, which is just a little bit north of Toronto. I am a digital literacy resource teacher in the York Region District School Board, which is sort of like an ed tech coach. And I have been sketch noting since a year ago, August, so August of 2016. And it's been a crazy journey that has exploded my PLN. And that's why I really love to share it. So that's on me. So we're going to go over to Suhana. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Suhana Kadura. Um, I am in Ottawa and uh, just got home from the OME conference and lots of cool stuff going on. I uh, teach mathematics intermediate, grades seven and eight right now. And um, I am a total sketchnote fangirl. And it started with Sylvia Duckworth. Then uh, I found the marvelous Laura Wheeler in Ottawa. And, uh, and then I started seeing some of Jen's stuff. So I am an admirer on the continuum of sketchnoting. And I hope to be more on the end of the continuum where I'm actually doing some sketchnoting. Beautiful. Thank you, Suhana. Okay, we're going to go over to Monica. Hi. <clears throat> I am in Rome, Georgia. Uh, recently, although I'm planning to move to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And so I have a new job. I'll be teaching a special ed um, K through five, um, resource and co-teaching, um, position. So it's, it's going to be fine with the little ones. And, um, I, um, I've always, um, loved to draw and probably about the same time as you, Jan, about a year and a half, I've been trying to sketch note, definitely started following Sylvia and, um, Mike Rohde. Those are the two that I first kind mm -hmm. of, um, fanned over. And then, um, just as, as they grow, um, Sketch 50, all those girls, they, I just love uh, to see all the different types of sketch notes. Beautiful. Thank you. We seem to have lost Suhana, but she might come back in. That's good. Okay, Laura's up. Hi, my name is Laura Harrison. Um, I live in Stouffville, Ontario, also just a little bit north of Toronto. Um, currently, I'm teaching kindergarten in York Region District School Board. Um, yay. <laughs> and um, I think that first was introduced to sketch noting. I also saw Sylvia Duckworth's sketch notes. And then I started uh, seeing a lot from Debbie Donsky. And I always kind of followed along with her uh, work and learned a lot from her. So um, I've also taken, um, <laughs> I've also already taken a sketch noting um, kind of minds on with Jen, but I was like, I need a refresher because I still don't think I have the confidence. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, welcome back, Laura. Laura and I are friends in York region. We're buddies. Like we're not just like Twitter, like we hug each other in real life often. It's very good. Okay. And finally, unless someone else joins us a little bit later, we have Judith. Hi, um, I'm Judith Painter. I'm in Salem, Virginia. And I teach world geography for eighth graders. And God bless, God bless you. <laughs> um, but my sketch noting experience has been more of admiring all those people and going, how can I do this? What can I do? I've always included sketches and graphs in, in class. And then I was chosen as a Grovener teacher fellow. Oh, wow. And um, one of the previous Grovener teacher fellows actually has just written a book about it. Her name's Wendy Pillars. And she, at, at our big meeting with all the other fellows, we got her book. And that was a month and a half ago. And I've gone literally crazy. I've scheduled it out. My students have done it. I've transformed my whole last unit. I jumped in all feet, hands, body. So happy. And, went <laughs> um, and the results have been amazing. So I am converted. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a great, great story. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on another window right now. Let me come back. I just realized that there's, uh, we have seven viewers. Hello, viewers. Welcome. Um, I am going to, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. But just bear with me for a second because I know that there is a chat that will be going, that is potentially going on. So I'm just going to keep that open sort of on my side screen here. So if questions come in, we can do it. Oh, Stephen Hurley's watching. Hi, Stephen Hurley. Hi, Stephen Secord. Hi, Karina McLaughlin. Yeah, they're all saying hi now. Very good. All right. So the only other um, 
at the bottom there, you can see all of us. But then there's also this one, and that's a pad of paper, and it's, it's not a real person, but that's me. So I have something set up. You can see that I'm writing there. I'll show you my little setup. I have a little arm that attaches to my desk here, and I can put my phone on top so that as we're going, I can show you how I sketch in case that's how you're interested. Because yesterday, I, um, I was actually sitting with Laura Wheeler, who Suhana mentioned, and she draws the best people, and it's something that I've really been struggling with, so I was able to sit and watch her. So I think if you're really new into sketching and you see someone sketching somewhere, just go sit with them. People don't think it's crazy. I don't, I don't think it's crazy anyway. I have people come up. It's one of the big reasons that I like sketch noting. In fact, I'll tell a tiny little story before we start. Um, sketch noting for me started when I, I sit on my computer a lot in meetings, and we were having a meeting um, up in curriculum around truth and reconciliation of the Indigenous people of Canada. And I thought, I can't be on my email. I can't be. It's just too disrespectful. But I know me, and I, I multitask, um, which is not good, I realize. And I, I thought, what can I do? And sketch noting, Debbie Donsky, you know, Laura mentioned, and Ryan Lee, uh, who does who did Doodle a Day last year. It's a really good hashtag to follow if you want to get started. Um, you just go back and do his 30-day challenge. But he, uh, they, they doodle and, and they sketch a lot. So I'm like, I'm going to give this a go. And I tried it a little and I started and I made an okay sketch. Like it wasn't, I probably have it somewhere around here in my book. And what, what really blew my mind with it was that night I came home and I threw it on the island in my kitchen and my husband came home. And as many people know, we have three little boys who at the time were six and four and four. And so, of course, we hadn't spoken in probably about six years at that point because you're not allowed to talk to each other when you have children <laughs> and because they just talk to you. And we, he said, well, what's this? And I said, oh, that's our staff, my staff meeting notes, my staff meeting notes. And he said, oh, well, what's it about? And I said, truth and reconciliation of the Indigenous peoples. And this is what I learned. And I was able to remember so much without even looking. And he and I engaged in this wonderful conversation around truth and reconciliation that really we would have never had, had it not been for the sketch note, had I taken like pen to paper, like just writing hand notes, or if I had been, um, if I had taken them on my computer, like I normally would. So for me, I just immediately saw how it could build community and how it could deepen my understanding and my retention. And I was 100% hooked. So we're going to go through a mini version of a, um, a, a workshop today. So those of you who are following along, we have some more people here. We have M Griffin 67. Hello. I get called Griffin all the time. Um, uh, who else came in here? Carla with Equal Step. Uh, Anna Maria Perez. Hi there from Texas. Thanks for coming in. Um, so I, if you are following along at home, what we suggest you do is just get yourself a piece of paper. Doesn't matter what the paper looks like. Um, and get yourself something to draw with. It can be a pencil. It can be like Crayola markers, crayons, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to take you through some quick activities to prove to you that you can draw and get you in the mindset that, yeah, this is something we can do and uh, I'm, I can take the plunge. And that's all it is. In here, I'm going to share my very first sketch note. So you got to be a bit vulnerable and know, and like I was not an artist. I now consider myself an artist. And I, I tell Royan all the time that it's because of him um, that he gave me the confidence through doing those doodle a day sketches. And so, yeah, so uh, that's uh, where we're going to head. So I'm going to do some screen sharing here. Bear with me for a second. Um, my lovely partners here, I've told them to jump in at any point. So if someone interrupts me, please know that those are our norms, that we're okay with uh, interrupting each other. Because sometimes when you see that happening, oh, there we go, in, 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 in. There, is everyone okay? Can you, can you see that on your end there, people in the hangout here with me? Beautiful. So a little fact here, I'm actually, I'm going to redo what I just did. You know, when you're presenting a, a Google slide deck and you're like, oh, you want to go to present mode, but then you have to close it and you know, like, all your tabs go. Here's a little ninja hack. This is a non, non sketch noting thing. If you take from the word edit onward and change it to the word preview, enter, it'll look like it's in pre presentation mode, but you still have your tabs at the top. Ooh, uh. So I like to do it that way. So like I said, I'm Jen Giffen and I'm joined here with uh, all the ladies who introduced themselves. And the first thing I'd really like to do is show you this video that's just all about sketch noting. So if people are in here and not really knowing what it's about or why we do it, I think this is good. Hope I've never done a video in a hangout and shared it out on YouTube Live. So I'm sorry if this fails, but we'll fail forward and figure out how it works. So let me know if there's any problems with hearing it or anything like that. Thank you. 
So I really love to show that one because I think it really captures everything that we do with sketch noting. Hold on one second. I'm just I turn on my iPad and my iPad doesn't like to listen when I say turn off the volume. <laughs> Can you hear me echoing? Mm -hmm. I might just turn it off. I like to be able to see. Hmm. Silly iPad. Okay, forget it. And now, nope. I gotta hang up from it. Jen Guffin, the rookie. And I'm out. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is, hello, there we go. Talk about this. I get this all the time. I'm ready to start sketch noting, but I am not an artist. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, you don't need to be. So if you have a growth mindset about anything, you can sketch note. And I love to show this little meme that I created, you know, with Willy Wonka saying, yeah, you can sketch note, or you say you can't sketch note, or you want to, but you can't. And then we talk about, yeah, tell us more about people who say they can't do math. And that's when I get a laugh from all my math teachers, right? Because <laughs> anyone can do it. We just need to try, et cetera, et cetera. Because it, it really is that. It's all about that growth mindset. And Carol Dweck talks a lot about that. Um, and just going in and making yourself vulnerable. And Brene Brown, who's like the queen of vulnerability, I think, and, and sharing why it's important, talks about it being the birthplace of innovation and creativity and change. And this is my very first sketch ever. I was reading a book. I wanted to remember the book. Um, and I started sketching and here it is. And it's not great. That's a little guy at the top. That's someone's foot. Cause he lost his foot and he's being pulled when he was water skiing. But I remember this first chapter of this book I read two years ago because of that foot that doesn't look like a foot. And I started sort of showing people and sharing it, even though it wasn't that great. And the more I did that, the more confidence I had. And at the end of the day, we need to remember that when you're asked, and I think this is I think it's Sonny Brown who says that if, when you're asked to draw something, they're not asking you to create a, a realistic, lifelike representation of this thing. What they're saying is, here's the Mona Lisa, and here's a sketch note of the Mona Lisa. If I just showed you the sketch, you'd be like, oh, that's the Mona Lisa, like, right? And it's nothing that's really crazy, because at the end of the day, as Mike Rhodes says, it's about ideas, it's not about art. And the other thing I like to tell students when I do sketch noting with them is, you have to remember, you probably don't have perfect handwriting, but you take notes. And it's the same thing. So long as you can read it, you're good to go. So anyone can draw. And this is going to be the sort of bulk of what we're going to do this morning. This is the visual alphabet. The visual alphabet are 12 characters. And if you can draw each of these, which I imagine most people can, then you can draw absolutely anything. And the more I started sketch noting and thinking about the visual alphabet, the more I realized that this was true. Because now when I look at objects, I can see like right in front of me, I have my wireless headphones hanging. When I look at those, they're wireless headphones. When I look at them to draw them, I see, I'm like, oh, okay, there's an arc and there's some circles and there's a couple of lines there. And I start to see in terms of this, sort of like words originally when kids are little, like my kids in senior kindergarten or, or year two kindergarten or kindergarten, whatever we're gonna call it. Um, when they look at words now, they just see letters and they try to sound or stretch them out. But you know, when we see them as adults, they're already formed and that's where it gets to. So. To prove this point, I want the, my, my fearless people in the hangout with me to have a look at these three shapes. And can you tell me what shapes are in the coffee cup? Well, you've got a rectangle, a square, a circle, you've got spirally cloud. Yeah. So when I see this, I see two different size rectangles. I I see actually two arcs that are put together and then another arc on the side. But this, can you guys see my cursor if I go up here too? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So this could be a circle that's just incomplete, right? You've just done part of this, this oval here. Okay, camera, what do you see? A rectangle, a circle, something on top that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in that case, and I, I say this to students, I'm like, all they are is lines. They're just lines because they don't need to be vertical lines or horizontal lines. They can be diagonal or on, on, on any angle, actually. So they're just three lines drawn together. Now, some people could say, oh, this is like part of a pentagon or something like that. But the top of a, what's the six-sided one? I haven't taught elementary math in <laughs> ever. Hexagon? There you go. We'll go with hexagon. That sounds good. Hexa is eight, isn't it? Okay, and then pizza is my favorite one because the pizza, guesses? Triangle? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Circle, dots. Precisely. <laughs> and look, that's all you're drawing and it's a cute little pizza. How cute is that pizza? So cute. Um, and that's David Gray um, who did both of those to prove it, or Dave Gray, he, he's the one who really came up with the visual alphabet. He's a good sketch noter too. So we are now as a group going to do some creating and those who are following along at home, who I'm, I should probably jump in and see if there's any questions in a minute um, when I stop sharing my screen. When, uh, what I want you to do is that we're gonna do some creation. So I'm going to give you different um, sh- items or sort of things to draw. They're not all items. And then I want you to use the visual alphabet as best you can to create them. And then we'll pop in and if anyone's brave enough, they can sort of share. So we'll see how they look different, but you know they work for us. For those following along as well at home, this bit.ly up here, bit.ly gift sketch mad PD, it is case sensitive. If you type that into your URL bar, you will get this slide deck and you're more than welcome to make a copy and use it or share it with your classrooms or run this. Everything that I create, I put out there for other teachers to use because no one has time to create absolutely everything on their own. And I think the more that we share and the more we do things like this Mad PD kind of thing and and, and share our ideas out, the, the better things are for students. So that's the sidebar. Okay, group, are you ready? Ready. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is a light bulb a light bulb. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I'm going to come back in. You can see everyone hard at work here. I'm going to go here and draw mine. <laughs> what was that? That was awesome. <laughs> okay, so I draw it as oval. Okay, how are we doing? Group, we ready to share? We do. Okay, so I'll go with mine first. This was my little light bulb that I drew. Oh, oh, there we go, light bulb. So for like, I like the little spiral guys. I do some ovals. That's my light bulb. Beautiful. Who's next? Uh, I'll go. <clears throat> oh, you go. Can you see mine? Yeah. Um, little light bulb, little swirly um, filament inside. It's just an arc and a couple of lines and some rectangles. Beautiful. The swirly. Filament is the most fancy part. Awesome. Okay, who's next? Mm-hmm. Anyone? Oh, excellent, Suhana. There you go. I don't know. Can you see? I can't. Oh. Uh, there you go. Yep, yeah, we can see. Oh, um, uh, just, I don't know, kind of like a circle that got extended and some lines at the bottom in a. Oh, I like that your filament's just like a little letter Y. Yeah. Oh, very cute. Very cute. Okay, Judith, Laura, are either of you brave enough? You can you can write to pass. I'm not going to force anyone to share. Oh, here we go. Judith is in. Yeah, I put the little lines on it so that you could show it was bright. Yeah, very good. Very good. That's something I often do too, usually in yellow. Yes. All right. I'm Laura, good. are you in? In this one or out this one? I'm genius and I drew mine in yellow, so let's see if you can see it. <laughs> oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, we can totally see it. I can see it anyway. Oh, and you're using a, a bullet journal. That's another really good tip for people if you want to make sure things are straight in the line. Bullet, do you want to talk about the bullet journal, Laura? Do you? Um, I got mine as a gift, um, and I'm just starting to use it today. <laughs> so maybe you should. Be <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I like the bullet journals. Okay, I can do it. So I have um, a tech team. We'll share these out if you go to their conferences. But they do rocket books, and yeah, in it, books. you can yeah, the rocket books yeah are great. Monica was using. There's little tiny dots. So close up, you can see them. Far away, you cannot. So it allows you to write in really straight lines. So if you're really kind of concerned about that, then uh, a bullet journal of any sort is really helpful. So, okay. Oh, Judith just said that my bit.ly is protected. Thank you for that. I'm gonna jump in right now. And before I do that, I'm going to, oh, I almost hit stop broadcast. That would have been a disaster. (laughs) I'm gonna share the screen again. I'm gonna come back in. And our second challenge is a dog. Draw me a dog. Hmm. 
we're going to pull the, the curtain away here and I'm just going to go back in and make sure I unprotect this. Sorry about that, guys. It's like total thing I do all the time. I think I know by now. So bad. Okay. That's, <laughs> it's okay. I, I often have dogs that look like sheep. Okay, for those following at home, I did just make the link. I did just make the link public. Thank you for catching that, Judith, and sorry for everyone who was watching. Yeah, still Stephen mentioned it on there too. Thank you, Stephen, on the on the chat on YouTube. You should be good to go if uh, if someone wants to check and just on the chat on YouTube and just let me know if it is locked down. Something I do all the time that I know better. I think Keto. hangouts and sharing settings are the equalizer. It's like <clears throat> <laughs> they really are. They really are. I remember <clears throat> um, watching Oprah Winfrey once talking about being. Do you ever get nervous interviewing all these like celebrities? And she said the only one that she got really um, Twitter pated about it was uh, Nelson Mandela. And it was one of her staff that said, "Here's what you need to remember: we all use the restroom." <laughs> and as soon as you remember that, like, okay, yeah, we all, we all poop, <laughs> then we're good to go. It was very funny. Uh, Karina is saying on, on the chat is saying, mine looks like a pig with a curly tail. That's okay. You own your pig dog, Karina. You own it. I have a pig okay. Dog. Are we ready to share? Sure. Okay. There's Maybe how about this time we just all hold them up to the camera and then I will uh, show them. Okay. So we have Judith. Just all oh, little dog is always little tail is wagging, and she did too. This is very interesting. I'm going to come back to that beautiful Laura has a full body dog. He's super cute. He's little legs. He's like a little dashoon wiener dog. Very good. And Monica, I can't see yours there. Monica, can you pull up just a little bit? I think it's maybe too low, but it might be where I have. Can you guys see Monica's? Oh, there it is. Yep. Now you're good. Yeah. Oh, look. He's oh, he's he's a little what's it like a little Yorkie with his pointy ears. Very good. And Savannah so. has, has, I'm not sure what kind of dog that is. It's a little <laughs> rat dog. I He's cute though. Dog. I'll take it. That's hilarious. And then my dog, when I drew him, had, well, there we go. Oh, he's sideways a little bit. Come on in. Uh, it's hard with the arm. There we go. It's just his little face. He's really quick and I was solving other problems, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay. So what I love about drawing dogs when I do this presentation is you'll notice some of us drew their face, some of us drew their bodies, and some of us drew both. Judith is like a champion who's, you know, overachiever, but that's good. <laughs> um, and I, both of them are dogs. If you show just the face or the body, you can do both. So this really reinforces the idea that when we're sketch noting, there's not just one right way to do things, right? There's, there's a few different ways you can draw. So that will take us to our next one. So I'm going to share again. I'm going to come back here, here. And, oh, I got to jump back in. There's my little preview trick. Head again. So we've done light bulb. We've done dog. Let's go to spaceship. What would a spaceship look like if you were drawing the spaceship? Oh no. Go back to school. Very quiet. Okay. All right. So everyone's hard at work. I love watching this on a hangout because everyone's how head goes down and they look very serious. First, at first, mine looked like a sombrero, so I had to change it. <laughs> 
And that's okay. And that's what, see, you know, one thing we didn't share is when we do this, like I, I always go analog when I'm, when I'm sketching, I always do pen to paper. I don't do, um, I don't do digital. Whereas I know that a lot of the sketchers I admire, like Sylvia, um, like Wanda Terrell, um, like uh, Julie Woodard, like Carrie Bauckham, they, they do digital. And I, I like the pen to paper and I do that for myself because I'm on the computer so much and I just really like to unplug and I like to be able to embrace the mistakes because I'm, I'm really type A and on when I've tried it on the iPad, if it doesn't look right, I erase it. And I'm like, no, go again. And I have like, I have an iPad pro. I have, I have an Apple pencil. Like I have it to do it, but I just, I'm not there yet to just let it go and not be perfect. So until I get to that point or until I still feel that, okay, my drawing's good enough that I will let it go, then I'm, and this is how I'm doing it. Okay, are we ready with our rocket ships or our spaceships rather? Okay, hold them up. Let's go. Okay, we'll start with Suhanna this time. Oh, so Suhanna's drawn a rocket ship. Lots of dust on the ground, very good. Monica has a UFO and we're gonna come back to that, good. Mm -hmm. Laura did a rocket ship. Judith did a spaceship and the tiebreaker is me and I also drew a rocket ship. Oh, very interesting. So I love this because when I, whenever I do this with adults or students, I'll be like, but that's a rocket ship, but that's a, that's a UFO and they get in fights. And this is when I like to talk again about interpretation because when we're sketch noting, we don't want all the ideas. And when we're doing it with students, what I love most is they don't, they can't capture possibly every idea. It's just not gonna happen. So they have to make meaning for themselves and it's their interpretation. As a teacher, I can walk around and see if they've misinterpreted something. So if I meant it's a rocket ship or not a UFO, then I need to change something in my practice. So I think that's a really, really telling. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because we're both spaceships. It's all about perspective and what planet you come from. I've been watching uh -huh. Lost in Space, so it was uh -huh. on my mind. There you go. There you go. See? And and there's that too. It's like the context. Where do we come from? What's the background knowledge? What's our what's our life experience we bring to the drawing that can also make a huge difference? So okay. Last one. Yes, last one. We're gonna come in here. We're going to share here. And our last thing that we're going to draw right now is freedom. So we've gone from concrete nouns to abstract nouns because when we're sketching, it's very rare that we're just going to do a whole sketch about a dog. But in a lot of cases, if you're doing like a keynote speech or something like that, what is it that would represent that? So you have to do a lot of symbolism and that's something that you would need to teach students, especially in the younger grades. Um, and eventually you're going to build yourself as you continue to draw things a little like icon dictionary and then there's going to be some. So if you're going to talk about um, love, you know, the heart might be that. Or if you're going to talk about innovation, that might be your light bulb. Or future might be the rocket ship, right? And I, I would argue that people probably do the rocket ship over the space or over the UFO for something like that. So let's go with freedom. What would you draw? Hello. I'm come back. Yeah. Okay, how are we doing? Are we feeling good? Okay. Oh, Allison just joined. Hello, Allison. So sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I totally can hear you. Oh my goodness. It's one of those mornings yeah, and I'm it. out on the porch with the girls and I was like, <gasps> of course I picked up my phone for the first time and it's like, uh, Google Hangout with Jen. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so, so sorry. Fine. I'm glad you're still sorry. on. Yeah, we're still on. We're still going. So that's good. If, if anyone here who's here has to leave, then you can go and people watching, you know, it's only supposed to be half an hour and we're one minute over that, but we're going to keep going because you know, that's okay. the way we roll. There's no rules. Allison, why don't you introduce yourself? 
Um, tell everyone where you're from, what you do in education, your experience with sketch noting as everyone finishes up their last little thing here. Okay, sure. So uh, my name is Allison McPherson. Um, I am a science teacher in the York Region District School Board. I'm Department Head of Science at Middlefield Collegiate. Um, and sketch noting, I found out about just through Twitter, joining Twitter, seeing it pop up a lot. And then uh, I started playing around with it a little bit at staff meetings and things like that. And I thought, you know what, this has a lot of merit because it really helped me personally remember the information better. So rather than regular note taking, right, it just, uh, yeah, I was able to retain the information. So then I started playing around with it with my students when they watch peer presentations. And they have given me a lot of really good feedback. So I'm still very new to it. Um, but I have now my students know if I say, okay, we're sketch noting for this, they get all their markers and highlighters and they come up to the drawer and borrow and they share and it's really fabulous to see. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank so you. We went through a little activity about um, drawing uh, using the visual alphabet. So that's where we're at. And everyone drew freedom. So you ready to share group here who's who's done? Okay, we will start again. We'll go we'll go Monica first this time. So Monica drew, oh, a person running out of a cage. Very cute. Very cute. That's definitely getting free. Laura drew a beach. Yes, I would love to be on a beach right now. Mine might have a cocktail in hand, but then we're all different. You know, that's good. Suhana just drew, oh, Suhana, tell us about yours. Are you muted? You can unmute your mic. I think, I don't want to misinterpret. Um, the wind, basically, I was just thinking, you know, when the wind blows and how you feel free and cool and... That's awesome. I, I, I love that. Can you... I love that. The breeze. Cool. Okay, Judith. Oh, Judith, go, is a, it's someone on a swing, correct? Am I right? I think you're, I think you're muted. Doing there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, unmute. Yes, yeah. Just right. It's very similar yeah. to what... Yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay, and then I drew the Canadian flag, or at least my little version. This book is too big. It's going to be sideways, but you're going to understand. Gift of freedom. There we go. I drew the Canadian flag. I once had a student draw a pair of handcuffs, and they were closed, and I said, how is that freedom? And the kid goes, there's no one in them. <laughs> it's like, okay, smart Alec. <laughs> it was very funny. Okay, so back to... I keep going to press that stop presentation. If I hang up on all of you guys, I'm really sorry, and that'll be just through the end. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about techniques. And this, I think, is the last sort of little bit that I have, and we're gonna do a minute on each of them. When you're sketch noting, there's sort of main techniques that you use to sketch. So you're looking at lettering, you're looking at frames, at people, and things like that. So the more you practice these, the better you get. And my suggestion to people is always have your sketchbook and when you're feeling like sort of like I'm a little bit bored or when you're you can't pay attention if you're in a meeting just start doodling little things and keep those in your sketchbook with your actual sketch notes and I say that because there's going to be a time where you're like oh there was one time I drew a pirate really well and then it will be there for you to use you won't have to go seek out another book so that's my little tip that I use a lot so we are going to does it no it doesn't start out that very good the first element we're going to look at our fonts. So your challenge for this is I'm going to give one minute and I'd like everyone to try to write their name using different letters. So for Jen, I would do three different kinds of letters and you can steal some of these. These are my friends Stephanie Signer and Janine Franklin. Um, their Twitter handles are on their little drawings if you want to follow them. They're really great sketch noters. Um, both of them have really cool uh, fonts, but you want to pick some of these or pick your own. Write your name in three different fonts. We have one minute. Everyone ready? Allison, if you want your little ones to join in, go get them to get some markers because I love to see kids sketch. Okay, I just, uh, they're actually playing outside, so I just brought her out to go back with her dad. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, Thank so here we go. go. What, one minute for fonts, and here we go.
20 seconds. And we're done. Okay, so back to us. Here we go. All right, so here's mine. You can sort of see it there. I did like, I love this font here. Um, you just draw a letter and then put little lines at the end of each and it makes it really easy. The other one that I do is, are dots around. And it makes it look a bit fancier than just a regular letter J. And then I, I often do one that has lines and I like the curly cues too to give it some... Uh, some character. We ready to go? Who's who's up first? Who wants to go? We'll go show hands. Okay. Oh, Laura. Laura, good. Oh, good. Very nice. That's a nice cursive there. <laughs> Kindergarten teacher. Nice work. Monica. Oh, Monica did the dots too, just like me. Very good. Judith. Nice. Allison. Good. See, in one minute, we can all draw our name. Did I get it? Suhan is the last one. Oh, I like the little polka dot one. Very good. Awesome. 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 Okay. So back to the share. We're back. And our element two is, you can do it. Come on. You can do it. There we go. Element two is dividers and arrows. So dividers and arrows are used to connect ideas or divide ideas or make things sort of stand out a little bit more. So copy some of these, draw some of your own for one minute, just draw as many connectors or arrows that you can, or dividers that you can do. Here we go. I just realized I popped into the hangout. I have Suhana drawing this whole time. I didn't show the dividers and arrows, so I'm pulling them up. I actually got my iPad to work for me. Yay, iPad. We have two seconds and we're out. Okay. So I got one done while I solved my problem. <laughs> but that's my little arrow. I just draw him and then I just scribble underneath it to create a bit of a shadow if you really want a good shadowing I, I don't work for copic but just so you know this is my absolute favorite shadowing pen it's copic it's um copic chow c2 and i'll show you what it does oh not that end sorry this end is um a shadower and when i draw something so if i drew another arrow here really quickly it's a really terrible arrow but it doesn't matter when i outline it it gives it the shadow. I'll hold it up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And that's not a really great example, but it shadows everything. And if you've ever seen any of my sketch notes where it looks like, oh, how'd you get that gray? It's 100% this. This is my, like, I, if I lost this, I would hate. How do I make noting. that image bigger? Because I can't actually see on my, I'm new to using Google Hangout. So how do I, I see the boxes of all of you at the bottom, but if I want to see something larger, do I just? Oh, click, click the box that you see. Um, my hand with my. Oh hand. yeah, I got it. Okay. Got it? okay, good. Okay, so who's? Let me see some arrows. Let's see some arrows. Let's share them out. Okay, Allison, you're up. You ready? There we go. Oh, some curly ones. I use the curly ones a lot. They're good ones. Judas arrows and connectors. Oh, very good. Oh, I love these. I love these little um, um, quotes. I use those ones a lot too, actually. Laura, very good. Monica. It's amazing what a little line can do. Monica's three little lines there. If you just even draw that to like um, section off parts of your sketch, it goes really well. And Suhana, very good. Very good. Okay, we're back to me. Third element of sketch noting that we are going to share is going to come. You can do it. There we go. It is bullets. Now, if you're not a fan of the violence of bullets, we can call them nuggets. That's fine, but I'm concerned about the chickens. 
Okay, so bullets, in this case, they don't just have to be sort of little boxes like we see. You can also make them into pictures, which can capture the meaning behind the list you're trying to, um, to show. So one minute full of bullets. I usually do just one, two, threes. Okay, and we're back. I'm gonna stop sharing. And I'm here, I'm trying to fix my uh, little arm here so I can get closer. All right, and back to you guys. So in mine that I shared, you can see I used my little highlighter here again, so you can actually see the shadows. And I really like drawing these tents because it's just a parallelogram with the triangle and the triangle is colored in, but it gives it some depth to it. Okay, let's see who else is up. Monica's are there. Monica, can you hold it up just a little bit? No, up higher, sorry. Up, there we go. Oh, so big, big numbers is a good one. Yeah. I love the box in the box. Very good. So Hannah's showing a whole bunch of different. Oh, she tried one of each and did different numbers. Oh, very clever of you. There's Laura's. Good. Oh, she did the same thing. It's like you guys were together. Is one of you copying? <laughs> Good, Judith, same, good, and Allison. Very good, yeah. And one, one trick that I always have, I actually have a page that looks just like the one that is drawn there. I tend to Google um, like sketch notes or sketch or whatever and literally just copy what I see. Like I never just watch television and you know, just watch television, I'm doing something else. So I'll have my iPad beside me and just be doodling as we go. And I think imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, so. Steal others and get started. Okay, next one. And for those of you who are still uh, watching, you know what, I'm just gonna really quickly go over to the chat and see if anyone is, no, no more questions, very good. So, fourth of six are containers. And containers frame out big ideas. And rather than actually having you draw your own, I am going to impart my knowledge of containers with you. So I'm going to stop. And for those of you following along at home, you can do the same. I'm going to come back to my sheet here. I think I'm going to, Sylvia Duckworth taught me this. So if you've ever seen any of Sylvia's sketches, and I wish I have her book at work, I don't have it here. But you know what, maybe if you Google any of her things, she always has a banner up at the top. And they're the cutest little banners. And I'm always like, Sylvia, why do you, how do you do these so quickly and so well? And she taught me how to draw a banner. And she sends her regrets. She was, um, I wrote her sort of 15 minutes before we started. And I said, hey, do you wanna pop in? But she has something on this morning, so she can't. But thanks, Sylvia, for replying. Um, and I'm gonna show you how Sylvia taught me to make a banner because it's super, super easy. So here we go. I'm just gonna move over a little bit. And so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna draw a rectangle, just like that. Okay. And then from your rectangle, you're going to draw a little line out on each side. And then underneath, you're gonna draw a shorter line. And then a line out from the short line that meets the end of the first line you drew. Okay, so, so far we've done a rectangle and three lines. Now you're gonna draw two thirds of a triangle or Sorry about that, everyone's now dizzy, motion sick. Um, you're going to draw two thirds of a triangle or two diagonal lines. So you're gonna go up like that, and then up like that. Oh, see what we're doing here? And again, same on the other side. 
And then to finish it off, you're gonna draw a diagonal line from the corner of the little ribbons up to the big box. And then I just want you to color those in. Like that. And look, you have a cute little banner. Isn't that a cute little banner? All right, next. Woohoo! Isn't that fun? I know. I like the banner, and I always feel I can draw them so easily now. Okay. Fifth element, and this is the one that people either love or hate, are people. And when it comes to people, I just say, remember, it's just a circle. It's just a rectangle, if that's how you choose to draw your people, is like sort of the round head and the, and the square of a rectangular body. And then lines for arms. But the biggest thing you want to remember is where their joints are. And their elbows and their knees are what matter to me when I draw it. So these ones over here on this side are mine. And you'll see like these guys like clicking his legs. All I did was draw his knees where they're supposed to go. And where you bend those joints can really have an impact on how you're conveying the emotion of the person. Or look at this guy, like he's sad. So I just made his, his body draw, like sort of droop over a little bit. What I tend to do, if you ever watch me sketch note people, is you'll actually see me move my body into a position and I'm trying to figure out where elbows and knees are. And that really does help when you're drawing. So try to draw some people. Think of three activities maybe you might wanna to do today. And what would you look like doing them? Let's go. One minute. We're almost encroaching on the next hour, so we're gonna have to wrap this up. <laughs> All right, that's done. I'm gonna stop sharing here. I'm gonna come back and I think I can get them in. I drew two little people kind of hugging. I kind of ignored my thing with my joints, but you can see their arms around each other. One thing I really learned, and this is a Debbie Donsky trick. I used to really, she has the best people as far as I'm concerned. I love her little people. Um, but drawing little shadows underneath people really makes them pop and look a little bit more real. There's something about even just taking a pencil and drawing little lines that for me makes people look I don't know, more like people. So these guys are hugging, you can start to see their arms around each other. That's the activity today because I have a feeling I'm going to see a few people when I leave here and go to the EdTech Team Core at the Summit, who I didn't see yesterday that I'm going to be excited to see. Okay, who has some people to share? We have them up. We'll go to Judith. She has hers up. Oh, there's one guy like sort of dancing. That guy, that guy's a little, you know, portly. That's good. That guy looks like he maybe drank too much wine last night. It was Saturday, so who knows? He's like hunched over. That's good. I hope that's not you today, Judith. <laughs> no, she says no. Okay, there's Allison's. Allison's are jumping for joy. Is that because is that because your children are with your husband and not with you? That's usually when I'm jumping for joy. <laughs> Very good, Laura. Oh, Laura's one little girl so confused. Why? And the other guy. Oh, he's. I like his arms behind his back. That's pretty awesome. Monica has. Oh, Monica, just move them a little bit over to your right. There we go. A guy sitting, sitting so hard. That's really good. I like that. And then, oh, people, sw oh, cleaning. Oh, Suhana, that doesn't, sound take that one out. Just cross it out. Give yourself permission to enjoy your Sunday. I don't like that one at all. Okay, and more hugging too. Oh, you also hugged. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so the last way that we're going to draw here today, or the last one that we're gonna draw is element six. And this is where I spend a lot of my time. It's with, hello, come on, is icons. So I will literally look up sketch noting. Um, icons, or if you don't know it, go to the nounproject.com. The noun project is awesome. It has little um, icons of everything you can imagine. And then I just start drawing. And I think of things that I might draw a lot. Someone, oh, is someone talking in there? No, okay. Think of things you might draw a lot and just go. So either you can draw some of the ones you see on the screen, or for those of us in the Hangout and those of us on uh, the YouTube, look around the room and see if you can draw. Remember, 
We know that visual alphabet. We have those 12 different, oh, and I think I'm still on you again. Rookie mistake, I am. Um, we have those 12 different elements um, of drawing. So when you look at something, don't see it as a completed object. See it as those 12 parts of the, um, of the visual library. So, you know, the arc and the circles and that sort of thing. We have a minute, let's go. I should have had music. Okay, we're back. So I decided to draw a little globe. You can see it right there. Globes took me a long time, but it's one that I draw a lot. Globes and brains are, and light bulbs are probably the three most common things that I draw. Um, and I had a really interesting conversation with someone once that said, oh, it's interesting what you choose, that you chose the like North American side, that not the other side. So I'd be curious if someone um, from the other side of like someone who was Chinese or Japanese, or Korean um, or Indian, how they might choose to represent their like, their world, even if they're living in you know North America. So I thought that was kind of neat. Okay, what what objects did we draw here? Peeps. Judith drew, oh, some trees. Oh my gosh, that's a phenomenal sewing machine. And that's totally just using the alphabet. That's awesome. Very good. A truck and a tree, lots of trees. Oh, it's because of the storm. We see them all over the roads these days. Yeah, com oh, computer's another thing that I draw. There's a little monitor from Laura and a book. That's a good book. I like your little pages in there. Very good. Monica Sahana, how are you doing in there? And I was, oh yeah, the, oh, you, you went back to the ones that we did. Very good, you also drew a globe, a little computer coffee mug, yeah, that's an important one. I got I got my Timmy's little mug going on right here. Monica, you have something that you wanna, you're searching around? Monica's now pitch black, I don't know where she went. Oh, she went to her face, okay. Okay, so we'll go back and we'll, I think we'll finish, we're almost close to finishing it up. Thank you all for being patient here today with our 30 minute session that turned into a 54 minute session thus far. <laughs> And we are sharing, am I on me? Yes, I am, very good. Okay, so the next thing that we sort of look at, and I'm not gonna have you draw patterns, but just so that you know, um, there are patterns when we have structure. It's sort of like writing a hamburger paragraph or five paragraph essay. When we're organizing our ideas in sketch noting, there's certain ways we do that. So these, oh, sorry, these are them. So we have linear, we sometimes have radial, the idea of these go down in lines. This is one idea in the middle with ideas like little like bubbles coming out. Vertical um, can come down. With that one, I usually do main ideas at the top. Same with skyscraper. I find these actually very similar. Modular is one that you put each idea in a box. Path is you follow usually using those arrows and connectors. And popcorn is just a free for all. You just start sketching to get the ideas. So the last thing I wanna share is a little how to. The first thing I want you to realize is that when you sketch note, you need some think time, okay? And you need to be able to sit and have some time. So don't rush into the sketch noting. Make sure you can lay out your things if you can. And if you're late to it too, that's fine. Just allow yourself that time to think and not necessarily um, have to capture every idea that is being shared um, with what you're reading or what you're listening to. You also wanna make connections. So some ideas are gonna to connect to other ideas and that's when those arrows come into place and that will help you build meaning as well. And probably most importantly is the idea of the synthesis of it, that you might hear four ideas and synthesize it into one kind of drawing. And, and remember, and this is what I have to really reinforce with students, is sketchnoting isn't just drawings. It can be fonts as well and words are fine, but there's that dual coding idea um, that when you associate words with a picture, you're going to retain it a lot more and you're going to have a deeper understanding of the ideas. My tips for you are this, try to stay focused as best you can. So don't sit near people who are gonna talk or anything like that because you'll just get irritated. <laughs> Share 
uh, is a big one. I try to always sit in your sketch noters when I'm sketch noting myself because if I've missed something, I just peek over their shoulder and and steal what they've they've done. And I, I do it too at the very end. I, I often people are like, oh, but I have this big space left, and you know the keynote's done. I'm like, that's fine. Just go talk to people and ask them like, what did you take from this? And they might have got something that you didn't, and you can add that to your sketch. And that goes back to what I said about my husband and I and engaging in a conversation we wouldn't have had otherwise. Be open minded. I know that you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. I once drew a bear that had frog feet and he wasn't supposed to have frog feet. So the frog feet just turned into a log and that's where I went with it. And then keep going. You know, if you make those mistakes, like I said, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. To help you focus, close your eyes so that you can really listen to the bones of the, the presentation and that's how you'll figure out your structure. And if you're not using a bullet journal, get a yellow um, marker, highlighter, or um, uh, pencil crayon, get a ruler and draw your lines. If you really need to have everything in a straight line for your titles, that's how you can do it. And when you draw over top of it, the yellow line disappears. So in the slide deck, like I said, it's up here at bit.ly slash gif sketch mad PD. These are a ton of resources um, that I've, I've shared to you. Kathy Schrocks and Karen Bosch's are like, it's a gold mine. It's like the jackpot, all the resources you need. Sketch 50 is going on right now. You're a little, it's a little bit late to the game if you haven't started, but sketch50.org is a really great movement where they encourage you to do um, five minutes of sketching a day. I know Monica, you've been really involved in that. And it's, it's a really great thing to do, especially elementary teachers when those kids come in all relaxed from recess and they're not hyper at all. Um, you can absolutely do some of these activities for five minutes and have them draw. And I have another page there just about like blog posts and videos you might like. And at the end of the day, I will leave you with this. Learning new skills can be tough, but you can do it. Try new things, don't fear the mistakes. And when it comes to sketch noting, just have fun with it and make your own meaning. So that's what I have here. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna come back. And I'm going to say thank you to my lovely participants, Allison, Judith, Laura, Monica, and to Hannah. Thank you so much for joining me on a Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Um, if there's anything anyone want to, everyone, is everyone muted? Because it got really quiet in here. I'm like, did they all leave? No, there we go. Um, you say goodbye to our uh, our crew out there. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you so much. Um, if you are sketchnoting, those watching and those in here in the chat, please share them with me. I'm at virtual gif on Twitter and use or use this um, hashtag sketchnotes or sketchnoting and you'll be surprised at the kind of traction you get. People love the visual. So happy Sunday, everyone. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.